Welcome back to another reaction video, learning about Germany today. This is why Germans love no speed limits, what? Uh, yeah, that's exactly why I wanted to take a look at this video, that sounds crazy to me. No speed limits, so is it Autobahn. So I don't even know what that is, so, so I'm, here, I'm here to learn. But the no speed limits, it sounds interesting, I wonder how safe it is, because, <laughs> yeah, there's an element of that. You need to be able to control <laughs> the speed you're going at. You can't just go ridiculously fast uh, without repercussions, but that's what I'm here to learn. Let's let's take a look. As I always say, keep getting your recommendations in. Uh, I've just started discovering Germ Germany, <laughs> Germany from some funny videos to some informational videos like this. Uh, yeah, keep getting your recommendations in. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a deep dive into Germany. Let's go. Okay. The adrenaline is pumping, man. Germany is literally the only developed country where cars like this can go as fast as they can. Wow, okay. He's loving it though. This is insane. Why even bother building them in the UK when they can't do it over there? But anyway, that's what we're going to find out today. Why Germany and why I am so obsessed with speed. Let's go. As a German, you grow up knowing that faster is better. From racing toy cars with my younger brother to my dad basically pushing everyone off the street who is not doing 200 kilometers an hour. Uh. And the German car industry makes you believe that driving as fast as you can is the way to go. And we've got the perfect race track to do it. Our beloved German Autobahn. Yes. Okay. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah, it's a specific race track to go as fast as you want. The first real Autobahn was opened in 1932 between Bonn and Cologne. It had okay. a speed limit of 120 kilometers per hour. Then the Nazis took power and claimed they had built the first one and they insisted on calling it Reichsautobahn. <laughs> My reaction here is like, of course the Nazis had to get involved. <laughs> uh. Nazis took power and claimed they had built the first one of and course. they insisted <laughs> on calling it Reichsautobahn. The Nazis also got rid of all the speed limits. The only time they came back was from 73 to 74 during the oil crisis, and it was set at 100 kilometers an hour. All right. And the government even wanted to keep it, but the federal states absolutely did not. Of course. Now it's just 100 again. How am I supposed to drive this car out if there is a He's so disappointed that it's only a hundred. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> the man's in pain. Hundred kilometers limitations everywhere. The sad reality is you can't go flat out everywhere on the German Autobahn. Well, we're supposed to drive him very fast and instead we're stuck in a traffic jam. And that's also a reality of the glorious... <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Yes, we do have traffic jams and construction sites as well in Germany. Mm. Even worse, about a third of the German Autobahn has speed limits. And it's wow. recommended that you drive 130 kilometers on the other parts. Recommended. You can't get fined if you drive faster. <laughs> but That's why... worded so interestingly. It's recommended. <laughs> but yeah, if you go against that, you're not going to get in trouble. 130. Because in 1970 alone, more than 20,000 people died on Germany's roads, which yeah. got the conversation going about speed limits. In 1977, a large-scale comparative study concluded a speed limit reduces crashes by 9 to 11 percent and deaths by 20 to 23 percent. Yeah. But a specific speed limit was a no-fly with the German public and the hugely influential automobile club ADAC even campaigned against it. So we ended up with a recommended speed limit of 130. To find out- Because to me that sounds, you, you gotta have, you gotta have some feeling of, 
Oh, yeah, not just other people's safety, but your own as well. You can't just be very... What's the word? You're just being reckless. You can't just... Yeah, what, you want to speed as much as you want, but yeah, it sounds good, but you're not thinking of, yeah, the bad things that can happen. And when they do happen, there's a chance it's too late. That's <laughs> unfortunate. How bad high-speed crashes really are, I'm taking an accident researcher for a spin in my ridiculously overpowered Jag. Yeah, in the Jag. Bockmann has been reviewing car accidents for over 15 years for German insurers, the people that pay for all those crashes. At the speed we're at now, you would automatically lose your driving license. He's joking, of course, uh, right? But for someone who researches accidents for a living, well... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's more like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was speeding. Then he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's good. But for someone who researches accidents for a living, well. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, liking it. That's more like it. Yeah. Woo. He's not complaining. <laughs> he loves speed. He's German after all. But <laughs> let's get serious again. What does crashing at higher speeds actually mean? In the formula for kinetic energy, velocity has a quadratic effect. That means that an increase of just 10 kmh creates proportionally a much higher amount of energy. So even driving just a little bit faster greatly increases the risk of life-changing injuries or yeah. worse. Studies estimate that every extra kilometer per hour pushes the number of crashes up by 4%. But it is also true that there are other countries that have a speed limit in place and still more people die per month than in Germany. Just look at the Czech Republic, the United States and Italy, for example. Okay, comparatively, com let's, let's compare. So Germany, 1.7, Czech Republic, 2.6, still low. United States, 3.4. Big, big country, US. Uh, but Italy, 3.9, that's... Ooh, okay. If you compare to the highest there, to Germany, Italy, that's that's a big difference. But the UK and Denmark also wow. have speed limits and fewer deaths per month. Yeah, that's... The problem is that these statistics are barely comparable because of so many variables like road condition, types of vehicles driven, and visibility. Yeah, there's so much. One thing is for sure, Germany's car industry does not want a general speed limit. It pushes the sales pitch autobahn tested like a drug to all you people outside Germany who want to drive mind-blowingly fast cars and still feel safe. Feel safe? Yeah, until you don't. Like, to me, how that looks right there, that's dangerous. Any weakling can drive at 250 kmh. I think he means me. Even for good drivers, things can go sideways very fast. Siegfried thinks change must come. So I think we need a speed limit that most people would accept. I think that would be 150 kilometers an hour. That would See, still allow us to get from A to B as fast as possible, and most people don't go faster than that anyway. The growing concern for the environment it's interesting. and the shift to electric. So, if you can't tell by my accent and seeing some of my other videos, I am from Australia. We've got speed limits in place, and there's people that don't even drive the speed limit, so the they go slower. So. It's so it's so bad because you you probably think about you worry people speeding too much, but more more often than not, it's people going slower than they should, and <laughs> believe it or not. So it's such a strange comparison to me. Uh, yeah, just a different situation, but that's a reality. Like yeah, people <laughs> they don't go to speed limit, but they go slower might get Germany to a speed limit a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Maybe even quicker than the US changes its gun laws. I mean, electric is cool and everything, but you can't go flat out for long without nuking the battery. Yes, that's the spirit, baby. Okay. Jesus, I'm such a fan of speed. I mean, the acceleration. Listen to this, this is insane. 
but driving at speeds unfit mm. for the situation is a major reason why people die on the German autobahn. And to be honest, yeah, driving see that just kilometers an hour, it makes you like it looks like he's having fun, and it's but driving is not necessarily like it's important when when it's really busy on the road and that you, you know the way I see it, it's like what I touched on why maybe people do go slower. Uh, like they prioritize safety and it's not like a game you know what i mean it's yeah just to get to point from point a to point b safely uh it's not like yeah like heading to a race racetrack it's a, that's like a different situation you know what i mean yeah it's yeah you gotta you you have some fun but hmm but driving at speeds unfit for the situation is a major reason why people die on the German autobahn. And to be honest, that's that's what I mean. For 200 kilometers that's... an hour in a straight line gets really boring after some time. So if you want to have the time of your life and go fast, do it on a racetrack, like my colleague uh, Ronnie did. I just feel like Over I said that. Or... I I just said that. It's like yeah, that's where you have the fun. That you go to the racetrack, like. Yeah, that's that's the straightforward. That's where you have your fun driving. In other situations, when you got to get to point A to point B, and so many other people around you do, you do it in a more safer way. It's not the to go as fast as you can doesn't sound like it should be the priority from my point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's dangerous when literally the worst thing is a possibility like not being alive anymore or someone else uh you causing that to someone else so yeah on on the roads in yeah when you're driving vehicles <laughs> you got to be careful you got to be careful you got to prioritize safety uh right up there because something goes wrong and you can no longer or as i said someone innocent might no longer be able to do anything in, in their life and I've known people and I've, it's a it's like a thing close to home like I've had family have car accidents and yeah pass away and so yeah the, when you've got that perspective you just think okay is this a requirement is this something I need to have in my life yeah it's it's, it's an inter yeah interesting perspective because that's why I said racetrack where it's yeah make more safer to do so yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it's something you gotta you gotta take you gotta take with care. You gotta your life and other people's lives with care. Yeah, like it's such a one of the hardest things for it to be something fun because it can be yeah having the worst consequences. So yeah, it's a really tough situation. What's your perspective of it if you're over in Germany, and what do you think? Because uh, I feel like even how he talks about it like yeah how yeah the deaths are high in germany i don't feel that's something you can say so casually because that's the the highest extreme thing like losing your life so yeah yeah it's something you gotta yeah take to the highest uh importance for me but anyway i'm gonna leave it there it's yeah very interesting no speed limits uh, the autobahn explained see i just yeah it's really interesting because it sparks a little conversation for myself so uh, yeah, things of these kind of interest, um, let me know, let me know. I enjoy reacting to these videos, leaving my thoughts and uh, seeing everyone else's perspectives because that's the thing as well. Uh, I'll never be here to argue with someone else, what someone else thinks. Uh, it's more so, yeah, seeing interesting perspectives and yeah, taking them on board from other people. Yeah, <laughs> not here to say, no, you're wrong. This is how it should be. It's just, yeah, giving my feedback and then seeing other people's opinions as well. Uh, yeah, I love to see that. But I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, subscribe for more German videos and I'll see you in the very next one.